Welcome to Handmade Happenings, I'm Marissa and today's video is a sew along. I'm making my favorite smock dress which is the Children's Corner Lee pattern with obviously the smocked version. For this dress I picked a light blue broadcloth and after ironing it I set about cutting out all of the pieces and there are a lot of those. Um, I had kind of forgotten just how many. After the pieces were cut out, the next step was preparing the front skirt piece for the smocking. So that means first putting it through the pleater and then adjusting the piece to the correct size that's needed, spreading out and evening out those pleats, and then I hit it with some steam just to block it all into place. And of course the smocking is the fun part. I did simple picture smock butterflies and flowers across the center of my um, piece and then did a geometric border on the top and bottom. I then returned it to the ironing board to block it again so that it wouldn't stretch out when I removed the pleating threads. Up next it was time to prepare all of the various parts of the dress for assembly. So I'm going to start by talking about the bodice pieces. So take I took the front yoke piece and the um, back bodice pieces and attached them at the shoulder seam and then repeated that with the yoke lining piece and the back lining pieces. I then stitched the back lining pieces to the back bodice piece along that straight seam in the back. The collar pieces were the easiest. There are four pieces so I just placed two right sides together stitched around the outer curve and then flipped right sides out and top stitched. For the sleeves, I gathered and stitched the hem to the um, sleeve band and get, ran a gathering stitch along the top edge. The back skirt piece has a slit in the center for an opening and you just I just took the placket piece and stitched it right along that folded it over twice and stitched again to encase that raw edge and then stitched a um, short angled line of stitching at the bottom of the placket to hold that together and ran a gathering stitch along the top. The last piece to prepare is the front skirt piece and I'm going to slow down a little bit here because this is a part that I didn't get to talk about in my introduction to smocking video and it's unlike the rest of what I've had so far isn't like something that comes up in your typical sewing pattern. So to prepare your um, front skirt piece you need to cut out like almost like armholes because it's the bottom of the yoke so you need the bottom of that arm side. Uh, to do this the pattern comes with this piece which you're supposed to place on top of the fabric and trace around that armhole curve. I don't like to do this because I've never done very well with any kind of marker or pin that you're supposed to use on your fabric. So what I do is use actually a different piece that's meant for a different view of the dress but it happens to be basically a negative cutout of that curve. So I have two templates cut from that and I line them up with the top holding pleating row and the side of the panel and pin them in place and then set my machine to a short narrow zigzag stitch and then very carefully stitch around that curved edge of the um, template. After that just take scissors and very carefully cut out around that zigzag. So you want the zigzag to attach to your panel 
because that's what's locking your smocking in place. But you, um, so you just cut on the other side of that as close as you can without cutting your stitches. And so I know it's a little nerve wracking, but that actually does lock in the smocking um, so that it doesn't like come undone. At this point, you can go ahead and take out the pleating threads. And then the next step is going to be to take some freezer paper, take a real thin strip, place it shiny side down, so dull side up, shiny side down, onto the back of your um, front skirt at the top and iron it into place. And what this does is it holds your pleats into place so they're not shifting around when you sew it to the yoke. And what I prefer to do is you let it cool and then I immediately pin it to the yoke and stitch it in place. And when I stitch this down, I only stitch it to the yoke, the main yoke, not to the lining yoke. And the same is going to apply to the next part, which is gathering and stitching the skirt back to the back bodice. You're only stitching it, I'm only stitching it to the back bodice, stopping at that fold um, where the back ends and it turns under for the lining, which is not at that seam that you sew that I sewed earlier. It's um a little before it, it's marked on the pattern piece. And I always cut a little notch to mark it so that I know when I'm sewing it. Next I place the collars onto the front yoke piece, trying to get them centered in the middle, sometimes ideally overlapping slightly so that they don't end up with a gap once it's done. Then flip the lining piece around so that the right side of it is to the right side of the bodice, pin in place and stitch along that neckline. And then clip and flip right sides out. Next, it's time to attach the sleeves just by gathering them to the onside and stitching around that seam. Then place the gar garment right sides together and stitch down those side seams. Then the last thing that I did on the machine was stitch the buttonholes. Everything after that was hand sewing, so I turned up and pressed the hem into place and whip stitched it. Then I also turned up the lining at the waist and on the yoke so that it hid the um, raw edges where the skirts were attached and whip stitched those into place as well as turning up the sleeve band and stitching that in place. And then I attached the buttons and it was done. Thank you for watching. Thank you.